Hi. The intention of this video is to give parents in particular, but this may also be useful to pupils, um, some advice on how to keep track of work that is due, but also to understand a little bit better how to find out about work that maybe is overdue. Particularly as we are now trying to offer engagement reports on a weekly basis, um, which simply indicate whether your child has fully engaged, part engaged or not engaged with a subject. Um, you may find that you receive an engagement report which indicates part or non-engagement with the subject, but be kind of unsure of what exactly the work that wasn't done is and how you would check that. Um, it may be that your child thinks they have done the work, but there's some confusion around it and you want to just kind of get to the bottom of it. So really, there are two main methods that might be useful to you as a parent in trying to identify what work is due and also to try and figure out why uh, something has been marked as not done or you know partially engaged. The two main methods are first of all Google Guardian summaries which are generated automatically through Classroom and sent by email to parental email addresses but only uh, will come to you if you have been sent and accepted the invitation to receive those summaries. Now as a school we have attempted to send invitations to all parents via our year group classrooms um, using the parental email addresses that we have on file in our records. Um, so you should have received an email at some point uh, over the last wee while to invite you to receive Guardian summaries. Um, it has been the case occasionally that maybe we have a, an old email address on file or that it has gone into parents' junk email inboxes um, or simply that people have just missed them because obviously you might have a lot of emails coming in. Um, so in the first instance, if you're not receiving Guardian summaries, what I would suggest you do is whatever email service you use, doesn't have to be Gmail, but um, whichever service you use, if you use the search bar and search for Google Classroom, um, you will probably or hopefully find the invitation for your Guardian summaries floating about somewhere, either in your junk or your inbox. Um, if you can't find it, it doesn't appear to be there, do by all means get in touch with the school via the, the school uh, email address that can be found on the school website and we can have a look into that for you and check whether it has been sent or that it's been sent to the correct email address. So if you do contact us please make sure to indicate which email address or addresses you want to have those summaries sent to for your child. Um, there have also been some problems where people have accepted the invitation but then not received the invite, sorry, received the summaries um, because the device that they were using when they accepted it was signed in with a different Google account and that's what's been picked up and the summaries are then directed to, for example, a partner or maybe even a child's Google account which was signed on that device. So those are some of the key things just to make sure you're aware of in terms of receiving the Guardian summaries. And there's a separate video about Guardian summaries, so I'm not going into too much detail here, but I will just quickly run through what you'll find in those Guardian summaries. So the most pertinent thing if you're receiving an engagement report and finding that it indicates part or non-engagement would be the missing section which will appear at the top of the Guardian summary. Summaries can be sent on a weekly or daily basis, and that's an option that you can change provided you sign in when you um, receive the invite to the Guardian Summaries. And to sign in, you do need a Google account, unfortunately, so that means that either if you have a Gmail account or alternatively, you can just create a Google account that's associated with an existing email address by searching on online uh, for how to create a Google account. But as I say, if you sign in to Google, you can choose daily or weekly. This is an example of a weekly summary, which I think comes out on a Friday. Uh, daily ones come out each afternoon. So this will tell us which work is missing and indicate which classes. Um, this example one I'm using here is really just for a pretend pupil who's only enrolled in one class, um, but it would tell you the title of the assignment and when it was due. Um, it will also indicate work that's coming up and in the class activity section it will outline assignments that have been done, so it will still let you keep track of what work your pupil has been doing and in there you will also quite often find um, classroom announcements posted which teachers sometimes use to give pupils a heads up at the start of the week where they may be having live lessons or to direct them towards resources or you know give them a, a bit of information additionally about an assignment which somebody's maybe indicated was unclear so it's worth having a look through the guardian summary that being said um, it may be that when you look at the guardian summary 
um, it's telling you what the assignment was, but you're not really that clear about exactly what they haven't done. So you want to look into that in a little bit more detail, or maybe it's not coming up as missing in the Guardian summary because your child has turned in the work or has turned in the assignment, but maybe either forgotten to attach something or just not completed it, but marked it as done anyway. Now, in order for you to find that out, parents can't directly sign into Google Classroom. So you would need to sit with your young person and ask them to open up Google Classroom. And in that case, the place that you would want to go would be, I'll just switch over here, uh, to a pupil view. So as a pupil, if you were signing into Classroom, you'd come to this home page here. You would want to have a look at the to-do list. Now, the to-do list is a kind of a live account of the status of all assignments that a pupil has. I just want to make clear that in this case, I'm looking at an example made up pupil here in a pretend classroom. In, in reality, Young people would inevitably be enrolled in several classes. Uh, so this will only show us a kind of a snippet of what you would see. If we click on the to do, we will see that we have this uh, several tabs at the top here for assigned, missing and done. So we can divide assignments up by their status and we can also choose to divide it by class. So if you had received, for example, um, an engagement report indicating that for your child's particular class, say for example, their graphic communication class or whatever, you could click on this drop down and find the correct class. And that would allow you to just read out all the other stuff that you weren't so interested in at that time. So let's just say that we were looking at this example class and there was something that had been indicated um, through the engagement report was part or non-engagement. We can see um, here where it says assigned, what we're actually looking at is work that is still uh, to be done. So that's work that either has no due, due date attached, which is generally not going to be the case for home learning because we have been asking that all teachers try and make sure there's a due date set. That's more commonly used when we're doing classwork in school. Um, and it'll also divide up by this week, next week and later. So that tells us about assignments which are to be done. So if we click on that, a pupil can open up and see the assignment and what its due date and time would be. They can click on it to open the assignment itself now this is an example so there's nothing in it that would include instructions and maybe any uh, files that the teacher has attached for the child so that's um how that kind of side of it would, would look but what's probably most pertinent to you would be the missing and done sections if you're trying to track down um, what it is that's not been done so if we go to missing we will see this week last week and earlier options for us to to identify work that hasn't been done so bear in mind that on Guardian summaries, you'll only get a summary of what's not been done relatively recently. And if there's work from way further back, that may be in the earlier section. But the weekly reports only really relate to work that was due in the previous week. So if you look at last week, that will indicate an assignment which has not been handed in. So in this case, the pupil would be able to click on that and see what the task instructions were, any files that needed to work on, and hopefully would be able to then um, understand what they were supposed to do and could contact the teacher by using the private comments here to ask for assistance if they needed to. Going back again, we also have the situation whereby um, you're looking at this and actually nothing is coming up as not being done in missing. And that's quite common in, in my experience as a teacher, it's not terribly uncommon for pupils to turn in an assignment um, either without having attached their work because they've forgotten or simply because they want it to disappear from their to-do list or not come up in their Guardian summaries anymore. And so by turning it in, uh, Classroom sees the task as essentially done and awaiting you know, grading or feedback. So if you go into done, say this example class here, we can see in the last week, we've got these three different assignments. Now, two of them are graded, um, but this one here is marked as handed in and there's no grades. You may also find instead of a grade, there's simply a tick indicating that it's been completed. The tick doesn't necessarily mean that it's been completed though. Um, so if it does just have a tick, it is worth checking if there's anything actually attached there because when a teacher turns, uh, sorry, returns work to a pupil, if it's an ungraded assignment, it still comes up with a tick. But just to clarify anyway, if we looked at this one here, which may be more suspicious, handed in, we will see that actually up at the top here, there's no work attached. So while the child has turned that task in, they haven't actually done any work or attached it. And it may be that there'd be a template file like a worksheet attached there. The teacher would ask them to complete, but they had not actually done anything on it. And if the file was there, you'd be able to open that up and have a look at it. So in order for the child to resolve that, they would simply need to unsubmit it and then complete the task 
add or create the files that they needed to do so, and then they could mark it as done again when they had done so. At that point, the work would essentially be actually done. Um, so hopefully that clarifies a couple of options that you have in order to help your young people um, figure out why maybe things are coming up as part completed or not completed. And certainly from a teacher's point of view, and also as a parent of a child at school, those are the things that I'm finding are the, the most kind of straightforward ways of, of checking that and directing them in the right direction for what they need to do and, and, and finding out why maybe something's come up as incomplete. Hopefully you found that useful. I apologise if it maybe went on, on a little bit longer than I'd hoped, but um, I do want to try and be reasonably thorough. But if you have any further questions, uh, do please get in touch with the school. In, in order that we can help and likewise if you your child is still unclear about why something has been marked as part or non-completed um, it would be a good idea in the first instance to ask them just to send their teacher a message either via classroom comments or by email to in, inquire about that and that will probably be the quickest way for them to get a response.